Okay, well, um, you know, Bolsonaro himself was elected four times to Congress using this electronic voting system, the like award-winning Brazilian electronic voting system, which has never had any proven, you know, cases of fraud or anything, because the basically the ballot boxes are separate from each other. There's no way of linking them up to a network. So at the most, a hacker could fraud, defraud like one ballot box. It'd be impossible to do massive election fraud with this system. And Bolsonaro was elected four times to Congress using this system. The first time he was elected, they still had paper ballot. And the first time to the presidency, without ever expressing any doubts or lack of confidence in the electronic voting system, but coached by his American, the American far right, you know, um, hybrid war actors who have a very close relationship with Bolsonaro's son, Eduardo, you know, this probably all coming, filtering through Eduardo to his dad, about a year and a half ago, he started announcing in advance that he was really worried about election fraud, that he was really worried that the electronic voting system could be hacked, and that if if he didn't win, it was proof of that the voting system had been hacked, and he wouldn't recognize the results of the election. So, and then he had generals chiming in with him, and he he tried to create a military commission to audit the electronic vote, and the electronic uh, Brazil has an, elect, an electoral court system that was established in 1932 that oversees the whole electoral process. It can create rules for election day. It create it tallies the votes, and it also can punish people for committing election fraud. It has punitive powers as well. And so they were like, sure, yeah, you can create a small auditing commission to look at a representative sample of the elections and the auditing commission did it, and even the military's own auditors couldn't find any example of electronic voter fraud. So, nevertheless, F, um, it looks like during between the first and second round, Bolsonaro and a small group of people tried to get international support for a military coup. Yeah. And so, um, he had one person, the president of the Liberal Party, trying to convince members of Congress to get on board with it. And then his general, Braga Neto, reached out to governments around the world. This according to one of Bolsonaro's aides who told this story to a reporter from a mainstream news outlet called EJ in Brazil. Uh, Braga Neto got in touch with the Putin administration and asked them, you know, if they'd back him up if they held a military coup. And they said, no way. And so then he got in touch with the Biden administration. And ironically, because, you know, the Biden administration was involved when he was with Obama and everything, of starting the whole Lava Jato operation, car wash operation with the DOJ, yeah. the Biden administration was like, no, and if you try it, uh, we're going to send troops to Brazil to reestablish order. Mm. And at this point, the military completely backed away from Bolsonaro, mm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, so most of Bolsonaro's ministers officially recognized the results, of, the results of the election. Most of the military people, the army, not only did they officially recognize the results, but they handed over power over the army to the Lula administration two days before they had to. Hmm. Some voices in the Air Force and Navy refused in leadership. But basically, we had a situation where we saw this coming a long way off. But without the help of the army, they were too weak to try anything on Inauguration Day, right? Though mm -hmm. he, some people would say, oh, this was a lot worse than what happened on January 6th. On January 6th, it was Inauguration Day. Congress was in session. Mm -hmm. January in Brazil is the vacation month. Like most places in the world, you get at least a month's paid vacation in Brazil. And January is summer because we're south of the equator down here. So, mm -hmm. um, And Brasilia is a middle-class city. Uh, the working class live way out in these so-called satellite cities, 30 mm -hmm. miles away, 25 miles away from Brasilia. The city of Brasilia itself is almost completely empty because almost everyone goes on vacation in January on beach holidays. And uh, so these people, they chose a very slow Sunday, the slowest day of the week, 
in the slowest month of the year when the whole city is empty to do their January 6th style capital incursion. Um, mm -hmm. So they, they came in and the police basically, we see on the videos now, the police just open the doors for them. Like they did yeah. at, to some degree in Washington. But it was mm -hmm. all the same. It was a very similar situation. Remembering that Eduardo Bolsonaro, the liaison between Trump and his people like Jason Miller, Matthew Trimond and, uh, you know, Bannon and all that and his dad, Eduardo Bolsonaro was at the January 5th War Council meeting in Washington, D.C. Very close to these people, you know, like Mike Lindell, my mm -hmm. pillow guy and all that. He, he's yeah. close to these people. Mm -hmm. It's obviously something that was based on what happened in the U.S. And so another thing that was that without the help of the military, really, what was the situation? Brasilia is a incredible icon of mid-century, like space age uh, modernism. It's mm -hmm. a completely coherent, uh, you know, planned city that was designed to look like an airplane from the sky. That's a world heritage site because mm -hmm. of Oscar Niemeyer. But despite that, it's actually in the middle kind of like the boonies of Brazil in an area surrounded by soy farms and um, cattle ranches mm -hmm. with a very conservative local population um, and a very high percentage of people belonging to these far right wing prosperity gospel, you know, Christian churches. And mm -hmm. so the level of support for Bolsonaro is much higher in Brasilia than it is like in a city like Rio de Janeiro or Sao Paulo or mm -hmm. wherever, Recife, where I'm living now. Um, and the governor is one of, was one of the most conservative governors in the country and a very, very close ally of Bolsonaro. And, uh, and so what happened is that one of the few ministers in the Bolsonaro government who didn't recognize the electoral results was his justice minister and security chief named Anderson Torres. After Anderson Torres left office on January 1st, this governor of Brasilia hired him to be the Brasilia security chief and justice minister. Uh, and so uh -huh. he immediately took over another just far right guy and apparently coordinated with the military police under his command to not resist this capital incursion style event. So after he'd set that all up, he flew to Orlando, Florida, which by coincidence is the same place Jair Bolsonaro is hiding out in. Mm -hmm. So when the day it happened, everyone's like, where's the security chief? Where's the security chief? Oh, he's in Orlando. Oh, okay. So that mm -hmm. then um, as it unfolded for a couple of hours, these military police were playing the turtle game. They were like, oh, you know, officially, oh, we're trying. The governor was like, we're trying. We're having a hard time controlling the crowd. <laughs> and But all these clowns in the, in the group were live streaming. And so... Yeah. Live streaming started showing up, showing military police officers taking selfies with the protesters, you know, mm -hmm. hugging the protesters and things like that, opening the mm -hmm. doors inside the government building, just talking with them, joking with them, you know, mm -hmm. and, the, and the people saying, look, they're on our side. Everybody's on our side. And mm -hmm. so when this started leaking, the governor had to immediately fire his security director, who's in Orlando, Anderson Torres, He's like, oh, that's crazy. I don't know what's going on. He's fired. Um, and then after about three and a half hours of just absolute ridiculous stuff going on, like, um, I mean, people try to frame it like, oh, they're just a bunch of losers. They're just a bunch of crazy people, whatever. But some of the people there knew exactly what they were doing. They broke into the intelligence office and stole mm -hmm. all of their weapons, their firearms, and a bunch of intelligence documents. They stole computers from the Supreme Court, you mm -hmm. know, and committed heinous acts of vandalism against national arts and cultural, you know, pa patrimony, like yeah. a famous painting by Di Cavalcanti, who's a Brazilian modernist icon who created a painting style in the 30s and 40s that didn't have any European influences. His painting, As Mulatas, which is valued, was valued at $4 million internationally and whatnot, which is slashed with knives, 
You know, mm. th they tried to steal the original copy of the Constitution, ended up with a rep stealing the replica because the original is in a safe somewhere, but they thought it was the original. There were people taking craps like on inside yeah. the uh, building and filming. So very similar, mm. I guess, in a way to Trump type uh, behavior. But so when this was going on, after about three and a half hours, Lula was just like, OK, he was out of town um, visiting a disaster site where a bunch of people had died in mudslides in Araraquara, a city in the countryside of Sao Paulo. And he was like, I'm sorry, I have to do this. I was, you know, I've been busy visiting people who have suffered from this crappy, you know, disaster prevention policies in this country. Yeah. But I, I'm declaring, I'm issuing a decree. The federal government has just taken over the security apparatus in Brasilia. We've issued an arrest warrant for Anderson Torres in Orlando. And uh, 20 minutes later, all of the government buildings were completely cleared out of protesters because mm -hmm. they showed how easy it would have been if the governor of Brasilia was actually cooperating those people would have never gotten into any of those buildings all it took was a couple hundred civil police officers with tear gas and the buildings were cleared out in 20 minutes you know mm -hmm. then they arrested i mean i could go on and on with this story but uh, yeah 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 if you don't I, I i will say one more thing then okay so there's this is kind of funny mm -hmm. uh there's uh these military bases across brazil where these bull Bolsonaro fanatics have been camping out since the election result, refusing to accept the results of the election, praying to Jesus that the military would enact a neo-fascist coup, you mm -hmm. know, and kill all of the communists and whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and most of them had, they've been shrinking in size ever since, especially since Bolsonaro fled to the United States. And uh, this, but this one in Brasilia still had like over a thousand people camped out there. And so after all of the mayhem, when they were fleeing the, the Capitol and the other government buildings, a lot of them ran back to the camp. And this wall of army men came out with armored vehicles, you know, big machine guns, and formed a human wall protecting the protesters from the police. Mm. And so they started streaming this stuff saying, look, the army's finally on our side. The army's going to protect us. But what they were really doing was like corralling them, keeping yeah. an eye on them until the morning when 50 buses could mm. arrive, when they turned them all over to the police. And mm. 1,200 of these people were arrested streaming like, oh, my God, the army stabbed us in the back. We don't know where they're taking us. And they ended mm. up in this big gym in the federal police headquarters uh like waiting to get you know processed process who are you what's your id whatever and and so then they started saying we're being held in a concentration camp an old lady has they've killed an old lady and so this photo started circulating of an old lady that had they killed in this concentration camp and then it, it took some ie analysis or whatever to quickly discover that this was from photo this was like a stock photo of an old lady from a commercial or something oh my god yeah and, <laughs> And uh, yeah. and so then they released 600 prisoners on humanitarian grounds. They discovered that hundreds of them were homeless people who had been paid to participate oh, in Jesus. the protests. And yeah. then there were like some elderly people who they let go for humanitarian purposes and mothers with children. And mm. so they're still holding like 600 of them, plus a couple hundred they took in other places. And they've arrested the military police chief of Brasilia, uh, so who was you know the third in command in that operation. Mm -hmm. And the governor, then the governor was removed from office for 90 days pending investigation. Okay. So in, in all, it's turned out, I think, making Lula look, look stronger, you know, mm -hmm. because uh, everyone in the world, almost all the world leaders in the world spoke out in solidarity with him. You know? I mean, mm -hmm. I guess I should stop and let you ask a few questions. I mean, just... Yeah, no, thank you. That that's a. Uh, I just appreciate all the detailed, um, like as a rundown, you know. And there's a lot of details. I feel like you're sharing that. Uh, I could be wrong, but I feel like in the U.S. and Western media maybe is not reporting because they just don't have the details, or it's just. I don't know. I think one of the common things that's brought up over and over again in u.s media is this is just like what happened on january 6th and yes there's obvious parallels 
there's some distinct differences, but I just want to ask about this one component because you're talking about people camping outside of military bases and there seems to be this longing for the military to step in and, you know, take its rightful place and reinstate Bolsonaro or, you know, arrest all the communists. Like this feels like, well, it's a similar thing to what the kind of QAnon conspiracism uh, leading up to January 6th and on that day. A lot of people were kind of animated by that belief that, you know, this great storm, the the storm is coming, the military is going to arrest all the pedophiles and communists and whatever, and Democrats and all of this stuff. And, and like, they were like praying for the military to step in. And it feels like that a similar type of thing is happening in Brazil. So I'm curious about this sort of contagion of this sort of, consp- this sort of, it's almost a constellation of conspiracy theories that are almost coherent, but not really. And then I think as the consequences of January 6th played out and Trump obviously is not in office any longer. I feel like a lot of people left behind a lot of that kind of framework that they were operating within. But nonetheless, I feel like this QAnon conspiracy theory, it's like pollinated all over the world almost. Like there's little bits and pieces of it that can be modified for different national contexts. And so I'm wondering like how much of the QAnon thing has spilled over into Brazilian politics and informed what happened on the 8th? Well, you know, the, the um, one of the reasons Bolsonaro won in the first place was that he had convinced a large percentage of the electorate that um, Lula's replacement candidate, Fernando Haddad, had, as mayor of Sao Paulo, distributed erotic baby bottles with penis-shaped nipples on them to preschoolers in the public preschools, that he was going to create a committee to decide the gender of children when they reached age five. And Mm. they photoshopped a t-shirt onto vice presidential candidate Manuela Davila that said, Jesus is a transvestite, you know? And so they were using some of this, you know, pedophile, Mm -hmm. they drink the blood of children kind of, QAnon type um, character assassination techniques in the 2008-18 election. Um, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the the big data targeting strategies seem to be very very similar, you know, Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, Bannon was head of Cambridge Analytica, right? He was like one of the founders of Cambridge Analytica, and they've imported a lot of those tactics. And so what we're getting are these tailor made messages for different segments of the population. Mm -hmm. Um, As far as the blood drinking and uh, things like that, I haven't seen anything that, you know, bizarre that like the workers party eats children or drinks blood of children or something like that, like they did with the Democrats uh, in QAnon. But Mm -hmm. I I have seen situations where like at at one base they gave up on the military and they all put their cell phones on their smartphones on their heads with the lights on hundreds of people and started praying for a space general to come down and save Brazil from the communists. Wow. wow. So there's stuff going on that I would say just as far <laughs> out there. <laughs> <laughs> that's the see that's the thing that QAnon was missing was the space general the aliens that were gonna come like that's what was I, maybe i'm wrong but man i feel Brazilians like that was love really extraterrestrials missing. anyway i mean brazil's like a place with massive et sightings all the time oh really uh, yeah I mean, mm-hmm. they, it's a theme in a lot of brazilian music and stuff like that i mean I'm not saying all brazilians but a lot of brazilians really like the these themes so it seemed it would, it would seem to be a cultural accoutrement that you could add to QN and stuck brainwashing down here is adding an extraterrestrial mm-hmm. element to it. Wild. I mean, either way, it's this kind of like this force that's going to change, at, you know, that's going to uh, the storm coming type thing. It's just like when mm-hmm. they're talking about military intervention, they, they don't even really seem to understand what that would be. Right. They think it's going to be like Jesus riding in on a unicorn. You know, and yeah. driving out all of the Satanists from the country or something. Like, that's not really how the military right. operates. Mm-hmm. <laughs>